Oh, marami sikreto yung sundan. For 70 years, legends have been told of a buried treasure, shrouded in danger. One of the great mysteries of World War II. Something very secretive and strange has got to be buried in that mountain. A covert operation led by the notorious General Tomoyuki Yamashita. Whether it's gold, weapons, military secrets, whatever Yamashita hid would be hunted for decades to come by treasure hunters. A tale that has intrigued world leaders. Rumor has it that MacArthur knew about the treasure, Truman knew about the treasure, Churchill knew about the treasure, and even the CIA. How was the US government involved? Have you ever heard of Black Eagle Trust Fund? Now, a team of Americans is on the hunt for this lost chapter in World War II history. We have a secret weapon. We have an eyewitness. With the help of a local farmer. Hello. I traveled a long way to meet you. His story. Many, many Japanese were here. May be the key to finally unlocking this lost chapter in World War II history. There's something right here in this area. The question we have right now is what is the best way to get inside this mountain? You will die. You will die. The Japanese didn't want you to find their treasure. We're not going to give up. For the past 15 years, Joan and I have worked together. When I was about eight or 10 years old, my grandpa used to tell me stories from World War II about Yamashita's treasure. Then I, I caught the bug. As far as Pete and I are concerned, we both share the same mindset of solving mysteries. Solving this mystery you know, is definitely going to be one of the pinnacle achievements of our career. It'll change how people think about World War II. During the Second World War, Japan conquered vast areas of the Pacific, looting gold, ancient artifacts, and other riches. The Japanese were looting all of China, Southeast Asia, Thailand, Taiwan, Burma. They were just taking everything that was not nailed down, anything of value. By 1945, the Japanese knew that they were going to lose the war. As the US forces blocked the way to Japan, General Yamashita, commander of the 14th Area Army, allegedly buried that treasure here in the Philippines using prisoners of war, many of them Americans. Once everything is buried, Yamashita, he surrenders. Commission finds you guilty as charged and sentences you to death by hanging. When the war ended, he was tried and quickly executed taking his secret to the grave. This mystery hasn't been solved for 70 years, and we've been given a chance to solve it. Now, drawing on decades of experience in historic recovery and excavation, partners Peter Struzieri and John Casey arrive at a remote mountain in the northern Philippines, where General Yamashita made his last stand. Look at how rugged that place is. Their mission, find what he buried here decades ago. And I've been treasure hunting for about 50 years. As far back as I can remember. And even as a kid, I dreamt of Yamashita's treasure. I'd become obsessed. Passionate. I like obsessed better. OK. <laughs> it's rumored that 175 treasure sites are scattered across the Philippines. Peter and John believe this mountain may be one of the most significant. I've done a lot of research on this mountain, but I had to come here and see for myself. Something was going on here. Strange symbols are carved into rocks all over the mountain. Some experts believe these are part of a unique code, one studied for decades and allegedly used by a secret society of Japanese royalty called the Golden Lily. The code was designed so only they could recover the treasure after the war. If you look at this place, it's so vast, it could be anywhere. I've treasure hunted all over the world. I've seen some amazing stuff. Based on the photos of the symbols that we've seen, I knew 
that there's Yamashita treasure on this mountain. And I wanted to be the one to find it. In partnership with the family that owns the land, Peter and John have arranged an introduction to the eyewitness known as Grandpa. This must be the place. You must be Grandpa. My name is Peter. I'm John. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Over here? Yeah, yeah. Over here. Oh, my goodness. There, I see it. Look at that. Look at all the nice little creases and valleys in it. Grandpa, tell me about the Japanese bringing treasure here in World War II. 1941, I was uh, 12 years old. To come here, their car, many, many Japanese was here. Was it uh, General Yamashita that come here? Yes. During the war, many, many vehicles have been passing through this. So the trucks came here. The treasure, how did it get up the mountain? The Japanese, they cut the road up the mountain. Grandpa said that the Japanese army cut a road into the mountain. Now, if we can find that same road, it would certainly make finding a way into the mountain a lot easier. Many vehicles gone, carrying their bugs. Came from where? Which point where they came from that over point. here? From over there. Okay. Yes, I'm over there. Very good. When the Japanese was here, the many vehicles they get stuck in the mud. They used my carabao to pull the boxes up the mountain. My friend told them, no, died, chuck, but I. Every, every night, the whole night, for three months, bring the boxes up the mountain. Yeah. Boxes? Many of them. Yeah. Many? Many, how many? You cannot count them. You cannot count yes. them? Yes, Japanese told me, don't go there, they will kill you. And then one, voila, I heard bomb. Boom. They did never come back. According to Grandpa, when the last treasure vault was completed, Yamashita set off a series of dynamite charges. trapping his engineers and workers inside the tunnels. This mountain has one unique thing about it. It's something that the locals call Breach 6. Breach 6 is supposedly the dig site that was dug by previous treasure hunters looking for a tunnel. From what we've heard, for whatever reason, they stopped digging. We just don't know why. Grandpa, tell me about this Breach 6. How can I find it? Where exactly is it? What, 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 what should I look for? Design. Pyramid. Pyramid? Was Breach 6 near the pyramid? Very near. You go up the mountain. North, northeast, that place. Danger. Danger. All the diggers get sick. These people got sick when they were digging breach six? Yes. Yeah. The Japanese put the uh, poison inside the hole. You go there, you all die. Thank you, Grandpa. Thank you so much, OK? This is a dream of a lifetime. We have a tool, an eyewitness that survived from the war that can give us clues on how to find the treasure. At base camp, John and Peter meet up with the remaining four members of the team. Brad, certified crane operator, certified excavator, the gold mines in uh, Alaska. We need him to dig a hole, he'll be there to do it. Welcome to the jungle. 
Manny, he's uh, ex-military. Manny's job is to keep us safe. Fresh coconuts out the back door. Yeah, I wonder how many snakes are down in here, too. Jeremy, he's from West Virginia, so he's a coal miner. When we need some heavy lifting, I'm going to count on him to take care of it. Hey, Martin. How y'all doing? Martin's an expert in treasure symbols, all different types, Spanish, uh, Japanese, uh, Jesuit. And he's here to help us determine what these symbols mean and how we can get to Yamashita's treasure. Come on, we'll get you out of the rain in our porch. So, Pete, what's the plan? This is a view of our mountain. We're, we're right there. And our object is to go out and find Breed 6. Where are the roads they brought all the treasure in? Probably buried under that canopy somewhere. Did Grandpa give us a starting point? The pyramid. In the Golden Lily Code, a uh, pyramid means it's a major treasure site. So it was systematically going to go up the mountain and look for the pyramid and breed six. We'll spread out and work our way up, looking for signs and symbols. In search of the pyramid, Peter is leading his team north-northeast, as Grandpa suggested, along a steep ridge that rises up the side of the mountain. You guys all right back there? Can you believe how dense this is? But thick foliage is masking any obvious landmarks or markers. What the hell is this stuff? Some kind of thistle grass. It's really, ouch, spiny. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Where's your machete? Can you make a pass right around the back oh, side man. of it there? I'll kill you. Yeah, get back. Right there? Get it. What the hell? Hey, John, come here. You got to check this out. Oh, wow. Can you see that? Yeah. Well, well, we should take some pictures of this. Oh, that looks like a heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that really looks, it looks like a heart right there. <laughs> That's for sure. What does a heart mean? Maybe it's showing us a way. There you go. In the Golden Lily Code, hearts are believed to be a directional marker. Martin, we're talking about going back 70 years. Can you tell if this is hand done? I think so. And it's not jagged. It's cleaned and cut out and made that way. Could be a way to lead to the pyramid. I love that theory. Let's keep tracking up, see if we can get a better view. So we're in the right area? Probably, maybe. Hang on a minute. Holy crap. Now that's a freaking pyramid. Hang on a minute. Oh, holy crap. In a remote corner of the Pacific, Peter Struzieri and his partner, John Casey, are searching for a treasure stolen and hidden by Japanese General Yamashita during World War II. And they have just found their first clue. I've never seen anything like this. Do we have a genuine sight here? Absolutely, yeah. The key eyewitness known as Grandpa says he saw Yamashita's men carry many crates, possibly containing treasure, into this mountain. Let's look around. Grandpa said the pyramid would mark the location to an abandoned dig site known as Breach 6. What the hell is that? Holy mackerel. Holy cow. Watch it, guys. Don't get too close to the edge now. Look at the size oh of this thing. Oh, my gosh. This is Breach 6. The identity of those who dug Breach 6 is a mystery. The theory is they were trying to dig a vertical shaft to intersect underground tunnels allegedly dug by General Yamashita's men. According to Grandpa, these tunnel entrances were closed with explosives and protected by booby traps. That's a hell of a drop down there. No doubt. I can't even see the bottom from here. No, I can't. I'm looking over the side here. I can't see it either. This is a big hole. This is a, a big lot hole. of digging. 
How long do you think it might have taken to dig this? You'd have 40, 50 people. It would still take a couple months. This is this is huge. You've seen a lot of holes, Doug. Would you dig a hole like this by hand? Not unless I knew for sure there was something down there. Guys, we're going to pick up right where they left off, right here. You want us this to go is, down there? Well, I don't want to go down there right now. I don't think it'll be safe. There could be traps under here. There could be bombs under here. Who knows what's under here? The traps set by Yamashita may be more than legend. In recent years, numerous reports have surfaced of treasure hunters found in tunnels around the Philippines, killed by booby traps. Most notably, toxic gas, sarin, methane, and hydrogen cyanide were known favorites of the Japanese army. So what's the plan? Most likely, there's something right here in this area. The hole may be the entrance that goes all the way through the mountain. We need to come back with the probe camera. We don't want to risk going down there without knowing what's inside this hole. Now that Grandpa's information has led Peter and John to Breach 6, they re-examine their expedition maps to plot their next move. How old is this map? 1990. 1990. So this map isn't enough for us. Yeah, we need something a little bit older. Yeah, I agree with you. We need to see this mountain as Yamashita saw it. Right. Bingo may be able to help us with that. To locate old war maps quickly, Peter and John reach out to their head researcher, Bingo Minerva, back in the United States. Bingo's our head researcher. His family grew up in this very area. He knows this mountain pretty well. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Bingo, how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? You know, we have a problem. We need some better maps. We need something that's older, 70 or 80 years old. We need something that Yamashita may have had in his hands, something that uh, would give us a better perspective of what he was looking at when he looked at the mountain. That's what we need. Got it. Well, let me go see what I can turn on for you guys. Knowing the dangers of Breach 6, the Japanese put uh, poison inside the hole. All of them died. The next day, the team returns to the pyramid with a video probe equipped with a gas detector to investigate what's at the bottom of the shaft. We're going to see the bottom of this damn hole, and this camera is going to help us do it. It's a really versatile piece of equipment. Well, how are we going to see what the camera is seeing? What do they got for that? Well, you got a wireless bay. Wireless here. monitor. Yeah. Cool. OK. We're going to clip the gas detector right on the cable and see if it goes off. I think we should send the gas detector down there before we do any excavation. We can't see all the way down into the bottom of Breach 6. And there could be gases or something in there. Camera working? Yep. I can see in your mouth, there. <laughs> Ready to go in the hole. If Yamashita's men rig this tunnel with a gas booby trap, an alarm will alert the team. Oh, now, see bro. it? Good. Yeah. That's a good shot right there. What is that? This gas detector, if it starts to beep on the way down, we know that there's some bad air down there. The faster the beep, the higher the levels of toxic gases. Right now, it's beeping at a normal level. Hold it right there, John. Look how smooth that look compared to all the rest of it. Looks my name. Look at that. Yeah. As we're sending the pro camera down, we're starting to see what appears to be man-made. Now we're really intrigued. That could be some cement that was put in there. The Japanese were infamous for using bunker-grade concrete. That would mean it could be a plug, or it could be the wall of the tunnel. It's really hard to say at this point. Concrete is a signature of Japanese army tunnel construction. On islands like Iwo Jima, the Japanese used a unique cement mix to build an 11-mile network of tunnels and underground bunkers to protect them from the impending American invasion. The discovery of similar cement here could mean the Breach 6 shaft really did intersect a series of Japanese tunnels, and diggers were on the right track before they died. That is just a great find, guys. Great find. I'm going to go down a little deeper. The beeping noise is getting more intense. That means there's dangerous fumes down there. It's, it's a piece of glass. 
looks like a broken bottle. Let's Holy Looks like a like top of a bottle or something. Is it a piece of glass or a bottle? Looks like, like a broken a... bottle. Holy It is a bottle. Look at it. Guys, we have a problem here. Inside the shaft called Breach 6, the team looking for General Yamashita's World War II treasure has detected what could be contaminated air and now has just discovered a mysterious bottle. Grandpa, the key eyewitness, says an unknown team dug Breach 6 years after the war, reportedly searching for a tunnel, but in the process was killed by poison gas. Well, what could that be? Could be a cyanide bottle. Cyanide bottle? Do they come in bottles? A small bottle like that? Cyanide? Possibly. It's believed General Yamashita used various booby traps to deter looters from reaching the treasure. Some reports say he ordered his men to lace the tunnels with cyanide he kept in small glass vials. If anyone attempted to breach these entrances, the traps would be triggered and the slightest concentration of hydrogen cyanide could kill them instantly. This definitely will hamper our investigation. Breach 6 is possibly contaminated. Pull the camera up. While the team plans how to further investigate Breach 6, Head researcher Bingo Minerva is on his way to Stanford University in California. He's looking for maps that date closer to World War II. By 1944, the Japanese army was losing the war. But instead of concentrating their defenses on mainland Japan, they sent their top general, Tomoyuki Yamashita, to the Philippines. According to legend, he would soon shoulder a great responsibility to ensure the bounty looted by the Golden Lily from the temples, bank vaults, and museums across Asia did not fall into allied hands. Arriving at Stanford, Bingo is set to meet with Dr. David Fedman. Fedman is one of the world's leading authorities on Japanese wartime maps and is familiar with Yamashita. So these maps do offer, I think, an opportunity to put ourselves in the shoes of someone like Yamashita during the war as he was using these maps on the ground. Is there anything particular that stands out? Here we have the classification of the map itself. OK. Top secret. So what was the year this one was produced? If we begin to read this passage here, uh, it tells us this map is from 1938 into 1939. A 1938 map suggests the Japanese might have been planning something in the Philippines three years before their 1941 invasion. A lot of the information added to this map uh, was gathered through covert intelligence. Wow. Yamashita and those around him quite likely were using maps such as these to think about where he might stash away war loot in the closing months, weeks of, of the war. That's some crazy stuff. So is there anything on this map that you could see, any kind of identifier that just jumps out at you? Um, this is a pack horse pathway. Oh. That leads up into the mountains. Something was being hauled. Um, and it, it, it doesn't necessarily specify what, but we can only speculate. Grandpa spoke of a road the Japanese forces built into the mountain. If they knew about the pack horse trail, it's possible Yamashita's men used this same route to transport crates into tunnel systems. Interestingly, if you follow this pathway, it just stops there. Oh. Okay. Uh, why don't we compare this map to satellite images? There we go. So this is the digitized version of your mountain. This horse path is the one that really intrigues me. I want to see if we could find out more about that. There is no, yeah, no pack horse, trail, pack horse trail at all. There's really nothing, no indication of any route through this particular area. The path is likely overgrown today. But knowing where it was 
may help the team find it. Wow, that's really cool. Sounds like your mountain is well worth uh, further investigation. Meanwhile, back at base camp, the team figures out how to safely explore Breach 6. Earlier, they discovered what they believe is cement in the side wall. The team thinks this could be a concrete cap, sealing an entrance to a tunnel. But upon finding a potential cyanide bottle at the bottom of the hole, their investigation was put on hold. So the bottom line is there still could be cyanide or explosives in Breach 6. We still definitely need to go down there and get a closer look at this concrete cap. I'm, I'm still reluctant to send the crew down there to start exploring. There's got to be a better way of seeing what's down there. I think we should send the infrared camera down first. It'll see any temperature changes. So if that's man-made concrete, it'll be cooler in temperature than the surrounding. Brad, if you put your hand on the tree for a couple seconds. All right, take it away. You can see, like, the color variations. Everything that's hot will go red, and everything that's cool stays blue. That is cool. So we can do that first, and then if there's something to be said about this concrete cap, you know, then we can go in and excavate it out. That'll clear the air, and we'll get a first-hand look at it that way. I like that idea. Here we go. As the flare camera goes down, if there's concrete down there, that should radiate cold. And that'll show up as blue. And that's what we're looking for. Got a visual? Yep. So we have like an orange right now. So I have all reds, all reds and oranges. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, right there. Hold it there. It's turning a purplish blue. So I have all reds, all reds and oranges. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, right there. Hold it there. It's turning a purplish blue. It's pointing to me. Yep. It's turning. Facing towards the pyramid right now. Well, that's that's when you're picking up the colder temperatures. Between me and the pyramid, and we're the coldest temperatures so far going down the wall. Oh, look at this. That is. Look at that. Look at that. The dark blue. We found a change in temperature radiating out of the side wall that lines up with the pyramid. Could be a concrete cap. Could be a side tunnel going right underneath our pyramid. That's exciting, guys. That's what it I is. Did. <laughs> That's something else. There's something there. And we're going to find it. So, what do you want to do now? I want to dig. I want to dig right here. I want this to be our work site. All right, let's get the excavator. Let's make this happen, guys. I want to yeah. see what's down there. All right, let's yeah. do it. Now that the team has found evidence of a possible side tunnel intersecting Breach 6, the excavation process can begin. The plan is to open up the side of the shaft to vent any potential gas, allowing direct access to the suspected concrete cap. Back at base camp, Bingo shares a new lead he uncovered while at Stanford. I was able to find a map of our area, and here's the cool thing. At the very top of it, it's labeled top secret. There was a trail that leaded off into our mountain. There's handwritten details in Japanese text, and it says that it was a pack horse trail. This could be the trail that Grandpa used. That trail was probably used by a caravan taking boxes up to the top of the mountain. Every nine for three months, he used to make her about. It could be that same trail. Using coordinates from Bingo's war map, John and Manny head into the jungle to search for the mysterious pack horse trail, possibly used by the Japanese army to haul treasure up Grandpa's mountain. If they can locate the trail, it could lead them to an entrance into the mountain. Manny, keep your eye open for an old trail. In the decades since World War II, overgrowth has obscured any sign of a trail. And even though John and Manny are in the right area, locating the pack horse route won't be easy. You OK? You got it. See, you know, the Japanese didn't want 
you to find their treasure. But uh, one way or the other, we'll get there. We're not going to give up. Manny, this, this looks like an old borscht or something. Yeah, it looks like a creek. Yeah. Oh. I don't think it's a creek. I actually think it's like a trail of some sort. Oh. Oh, yeah, man. There you go. It's a pretty damn wide trail, too. Or this is where Bingo said it would be. John and Manny may have just discovered what could be the pack animal trail. Grandpa says General Yamashita used to move crates up the mountain. What do you got? I got 12.6. This road is definitely wide enough to drive a Japanese truck up. Manny, let's see where this road goes. Manny. Yeah. Looks like the road stops here. Like they like they pushed it up and then just pushed it to there and that's it. Look what you're standing in. Everywhere we look, just fractured rock. These rocks, even look at this one here. Look how it's just shattered to death here. Oh, yeah. I got some broken pieces here too. I know. See how it's nice and round on one side? Yep. It's all over. I've seen a lot of heavy highway work where they actually blow the cliff face off. And the rocks were just like that, really cracked, angular, sharp rocks. Remember what Grandpa said? You know, Grandpa heard the explosions coming off the mountain. The Japanese told him, we'll kill you if you dare come up here. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fractured like this if just nothing happened. It just doesn't fit in with this jungle. It should not be here. So the only other thing that I could lead to is that this was an entrance into the mountain. What you're standing in. Everywhere we look, just fractured rock. You know, Grandpa heard the explosions coming off the mountain. I got some broken pieces here, too. It just doesn't fit in with this jungle. It should not be here. So the only other thing that I could lead to is that this was an entrance into the mountain. The trek went freaking awesome, Pete. You're not going to believe this. We actually found this trail. It's not a pack animal trail. It's a road. It's like 13 feet wide. Yeah, the fact that you found a road up there, we're not talking about pack animals anymore. We're talking about vehicles. We're talking about trucks. You know, and it verifies what Grandpa said, but it actually takes it to a new level now. You can move a lot of treasure across this road. So that little bit of treasure that I may have thought came up on caravals and horses is now. So you're talking tons and tons of stuff going up this road. A lot of treasure coming up into this mountain for them to even think about building a road like just the engineering of a loan to do that. It had to be something worthwhile to do it. That makes this treasure way bigger than we even thought. Massive. While the exact scope and value of Japan's war loot remains a mystery, it is estimated Yamashita's treasure vaults contain untold billions, possibly even a trillion dollars by today's gold standards. That total doesn't include the priceless artifacts, religious relics, and even plans for top secret weapons allegedly stolen by the Japanese Imperial Army. The Nazis conducted a similar looting campaign, prompting many European nations to keep their valuables in Asian banks never suspecting they could fall into the hands of the Japanese army. It's just treasure could be massive. Absolutely. So with that said, where is Breach 6 and the pyramid in relation to your road? It's actually pretty close by. If you go up the mountain, say another, say 250, 300 feet, you know, you have the pyramid rock and you got Breach 6, you know, right next to it. It's weird though, because the road goes right along and then it kind of hugs the mountain and all of a sudden, whoosh, it dead ends. You know, maybe somewhere along the line, they actually had a tunnel that went into the mountain, they blew it closed, and it all came crashing down. I wonder if there's any connection between the pyramid and Breed 6 with your road, considering that it's so close in proximity. Could be the reason why they dug Breed 6 to begin with. Maybe they were going after this collapsed tunnel. And maybe our road actually does connect to it. I, I, I like that idea. The question we have right now is, what is the best way to get inside this mountain? We got to get down in that hole and find out. The story and the treasure itself is 
is getting bigger and bigger. All right, guys, let's turn this jungle into a job site. To avoid any booby traps or potential poison gas at the bottom of the shaft, Peter and the team are planning to access the possible concrete cap from the side instead of from inside breach six. Let's clear out all of those weeds over there. Before excavation can begin, the area is cleared for heavy machinery with the approval of landowners and local officials. Look at this. What is that? Looks like a chisel mark. John! Yes, sir. Come over here, please. What'd you find? Peter. Hey, Pete. Check this out. They found some box markers. In the Golden Lily Code, a box marker usually signifies a vault. The number of boxes will indicate the number of vaults. To date, at least 26 different variations of box markers have been identified. The marker's proximity to breach six could point to vaults buried deep below. Oh, There's yeah. two right here. Oh, square mark the hole, square mark the hole. This is definitely man-made. Here's something right here in this area. This is really a remarkable indentation in the rock. There's something underneath it. Or maybe the rock was over there, and they moved it over there so they could dig. It's possible. This marker may have sat directly on top of Reef 6. This is where we're going to be digging. You'll make that happen? I'm going to. All right, thank you, guys. Let's go. To avoid any potential poison gas in the hole, heavy equipment operator Brad Carr intends to use the team's excavator to open up the side of Breach 6 to verify the existence of a cement cap in the wall of the mysterious shaft, which could provide a way to access a potential tunnel network buried within the mountain. Here we go! Breach 6 is about to become Breach 7. Breach 6 is about to become Breach 7. At Breach 6, Brad breaks ground next to the giant shaft that could prove to be the team's entrance into the mountain. The theory is that Yamashita's men allegedly dug a network of horizontal tunnels and hid the treasure there. After completion, the surface entrances were sealed by an explosion. How big do you think the tunnel is, John? It don't matter how deep it is, we get there. Yeah, that's for sure. A lot of people that did come and search for this treasure, they dug the hole, chemicals got to them, and they died in the hole because they just weren't prepared. We have to be very careful how we proceed with Breach 6. This is serious stuff. You can die. To avoid triggering any potential booby traps and what might be contaminated air, the plan is to excavate alongside the hole and lower the excavator down in steps. Once the sidewall is open, they can safely dig straight into breach six. All right, why does it look like you're taking a bit? Just for you. Yeah, I haven't cleaned up in no time. Definitely keep an eye out for signs, civil, because you don't want to run over something that may play a big part in it. All right. The team is finally ready to peel open the side of Breach 6 in order to vent any dangerous gases possibly still lingering inside the hole. Well done! To dig down the 45 feet needed to open Breach 6, Brad and Jeremy continue working through the night. Now all the real work starts, that's for sure. We're just about there. We're almost to the bottom. Excavation is now level with the potential concrete cap, allowing the team their first clear look at the possible entrance to a side tunnel extending under the pyramid. You got to get over here and take a look at this. It's exciting. <laughs> Not away. 
guys did a hell of a job. Wow. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. Here, 10 feet from the bottom. It's still a long ways down there. Look at the difference in that rock as opposed to everything else around it. It's definitely a different texture. It looks like nothing else around here at all. Let's get the excavator in here and tear it up. We can do that. And if there is a side tunnel in there, you could be the first one to go through it. Oh, I'll rip right through it and Let's go make right it into it. Pretty tight, John. I don't know if I'm even gonna fit. Yeah, you only got like uh, 10 inches off your right track to wall. Go ahead. Keep going. Two feet of clearance on the counterweight. All right, here we go. I'm gonna punch in right now. Go for it, bro. Been digging for days just for this moment. this season on the lost gold of World War II. We have a new technology that's coming in. It's called LiDAR. So oh, there are the trails in there. All my ears are treasure hunting. I've never seen X marks the spot. Maybe the cave on our mountain was one of Yamashita's headquarters. Yamashita didn't make anything easy for anybody. And there was a waterfall and something that looked like a monkey head behind the waterfall. You see that? Uh -huh. See the hexagon? Right. And that's showing you there's treasure in here. Holy. What do you got? This has been worked in here. This could be the back door. It could be good or bad. What do you mean? It could be a bomb in here. Oh, damn it. Look. We're constantly fighting Mother Nature. Mud slides are getting bad. Wipe us right off the hill. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. 